What is up guys, it is me once again. So today's video, we're gonna be taking apart my JBL Church 3 and my JBL Extreme 2. We are going to be explaining the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and start off with my JBL Charge 3. So as you can see, the speaker works absolutely fine. On my last YouTube video, you actually saw me take it apart uh, for educational purposes only. But, uh, I'm gonna show you that it works perfectly fine. So, let's go ahead and play a non-copyrighted song because this is YouTube and YouTube likes to copyright everything if uh, you play the wrong song. So, we're gonna be playing Invincible by, uh, by NCS. So, let's go ahead and do that now. So that is my JBL Charge 3. Let's go ahead and get my bigger JBL Extreme 2. If you're wondering why I have wires sticking out of here is because I'm running external speakers out of it. Even though it's not recommended for your JBL, please don't do this at home because it will destroy your water resistance. I did have this speaker for over two years and it is, you know, pretty much beaten up. So let's go ahead and turn it on. You should hear a bigger uh, sound or a bigger bass. There we go. I go ahead and move these wires out away. There we go. Just wrap it around. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and play the same exact song. Uh, same, uh, same part. So let's do this now. Now that you see that it works um yeah so let's go ahead and take it apart um i'm gonna be starting off with my jbl church 3 so let's go ahead and move my bigger jbl out the way and let's get my new tool set that i got it's really nice um since i'm repairing iphones it does come with a y triple zero but that is not on the topic right now so let's go ahead and get the right bit and let's go ahead and get the little screwdriver part if not i can use my my old um my old set so let's go ahead and remove these two guys okay that's not gonna work so let's go ahead and get my other tool set so let's go ahead and open this and uh, i should have it in three two one all right here we are i have it again so Let's go ahead and remove these screws to my JBL Charge 3. And if you do attempt to remove the speakers from your JBL or any waterproof speaker, I am not responsible for any damage that you cause to your own stuff. So please don't tag me and say, I damage your speaker. This is not recommended. I'm obviously doing it because I am quite experienced with taking apart stuff and putting them back together. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove these screws. And uh, if you are going to uh, remove your speaker, let's say you, you blow, you you have a blown speaker. Uh, what you want to do, this is how you replace a blown speaker. So you want to take out all four screws on a typical JBL Charge 3. It depends what side, it's uh, vice versa. So this is what we do. You want to take out the speaker itself. You want to remove the leads. They can be quite stubborn sometimes. So this is how you do it. You want to grab your new speaker that works just fine and then plug it back in and then screw it back in. So let's go ahead and get my JBL Charge 3 out of the way. Let's go ahead and put that speaker right there. Okay, let me just uh, rearrange you guys. There you go. So this is my bigger JBL Charge, or my bigger JBL Extreme 2. 
This is a bigger guy. It has tweeters in it. And my JBL Charge 3 does not have any tweeters at all. One, because it is small. It is smaller compared to this guy. So I take out the tweeters uh, to show you that, you know, let's post a tweet. Haha. -ha. Um, so the tweeters, what they do in my last video, I explained how tweeters work. Um, so they basically convert the high frequencies uh, and they um, send it out. And that is the high pitch sound that we hear out of most high quality speakers. So let's go ahead and get this guy out and pull on these wires right here and this should come out. Okay, it's giving me a difficult time. So uh, let's go ahead and fast All right. forward. So this is my uh, JBL. I just got the, the speaker removed. So let's go ahead and put that to the side. As you can see, this is the motherboard slash amplifier board. You can see the other speaker right here. I would have been inside of it because you can see a bunch of tape and you can see the screw wear. So you can see the individual uh, resistors, uh, chips and everything else. So that's how it's done. So let's go ahead and remove that and pull it aside. This is my JBL Extreme 2's woofer and my JBL Charge 3's woofer. You can see how small they are. See, if I zoom you guys in, you can see how small they really are. So, there it is, right there. So, since my JBL, uh, my JBL Church 3 is way younger, it is one year old compared to my JBL Extreme 2, which is three years old. Um, so yeah. Um, you can see the voice coil on there, and you can see the little tinsel leads in there. Little copper guy is going into the actual voice coil. Let me go ahead and hold this still. And you can see right here, there it is. Right there, you can see the little glue or tape into the voice coil. So yeah, uh, this is my, uh, obviously my Xtreme 2. And um, this is not a full range speaker, unlike this one. This is a full range speaker. And this is not, this is a mid range. And uh, these tweeters cover the high range. So these tweeters are supposed to be, uh, you know, causing a trouble. Trouble is uh, is the, the little tss 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 that we hear out of little tweeters. So right here, this is my, uh, my full range JBL Charge 3. And there was this one comment in my last video, I won't mention the name. So he was saying that JBL claims to have a full range speaker, um, which is, yeah, it is true. They do have a full range speaker on on the JBL Charge 3 and the, and the other uh, JBLs. See, what doesn't really make sense to me is they claim that they have, um, full range speakers and this is clearly a full range speaker um you know it doesn't make sense to me because this is responsible for all the highs and all the lows i know it's not going to be the best lows or the best highs but it is a mid-range speaker it's not like my jbo extreme 2 which has a bigger box and can reproduce the bass frequencies way better uh you see unlike this guy and I go ahead and move my JBL out of the way and just have these side by side. You can see how small this JBL Charge 3 really is compared to this five pound beast right here. Yes, this is five pounds. Yeah, all that technology battery, you can actually see the battery right there, that little blue part. And uh, in my next video, I'll show you how to replace a battery on a JBL Extreme 2. Same with a JBL Charge 3. You can see right here, this is the Charge 3 model. It comes with a uh, with a uh, USB output to charge your phones. And same thing with the JBL Extreme 2. What doesn't make sense is what he's saying he says that a full wing speaker you cannot get great highs yes i understand that you cannot great get great highs or lows on a jbl that's why you need a subwoofer um because a subwoofer is really good at reproducing low bass that's what they're designed for that's what the amplifiers are designed for they're designed 
to play the lowest bass that they can possibly can it and it all matters on the box you see this is not a very big box you see this it's not even a box, it's basically a tube with uh, passive radiators at the end. What passive radiators are is non-speakers. So they basically work on the air pressure that is inside. So that's why they say it's not recommended if you push it in. Same thing with your actual speaker driver because you can actually damage it. Unlike this guy, this is the same thing. That's why it's not recommended for you to push it in. Same thing what I said. And uh, this works off of the same air pressure. This JBL is also IPX7 rated, but mine is no longer waterproof because I have been taking it apart for a long time. Um, just so I can educate myself on how these speakers work. If I would have removed this guy, I had to remove this entire chunk off of the JBL. It's quite annoying, but that's what I have to do. Um, anyways. This is the full range, this is the mid range slash full range, this handles the voices and the tweeter always handles the high notes and the high notes only. This guy, on a smaller JBL, you have no room for tweeters, like you can probably put a very small tweeter but that is just a waste of energy uh, for the battery. So it doesn't need a crossover, this just needs a full range uh, amplifier board you can see right here and the JBL has a uh, full a uh, crossover for the mid-range and the high range so I go ahead and take apart this JBL just to show you how it works so you can see the little uh, um, crossover to the tweeter itself and you can see the just the mid-range it's only mid-range it can handle the vocals just fine but it doesn't play the high notes as well as the tweeters. All right, so I'm gonna be explaining why uh, the JBL Charge Suite does not have tweeters, and but this guy does have tweeters. So let's go ahead and bring up the size difference. You can see how smaller and shorter compared to the JBL Extreme 2. This one is just a bit longer. If I center it perfectly, this is just a, um, you see, it's just a tad smaller, but it's way shorter. So, doesn't mean that's not good, it's perfectly fine, but why JBL Charge 3 or the smaller ones don't have tweeters? Because if you're going to put a tweeter, this is the only room that you got right here. Right here. This is the only room that you got. And you cannot put tweeters on the actual woofers like this or like this which is i'm showing on the screen it's just not possible because it's gonna cost more money to build a speaker that has a tweeter built into it and it's just less efficient it won't be waterproof and that's jbl's point they they want this to be waterproof so doesn't mean that my jbl extreme 2 is not waterproof it is absolutely waterproof but in my jbl it is not because i've been taking that apart because of wear and tear and i've been replacing parts in and out from it but how this works um in order to put a tweeter they have to make it longer or maybe taller doesn't make sense this is only a hundred dollar jbl extreme or jbl charge 3. the jbl extreme 2 goes for 350 dollars which is just crazy. But you see right here, this is good enough. This is just a full range speaker. It cannot handle the lows, it cannot handle the highs as well, but it can respond to bass perfectly fine. You see, this, I know, it's way bigger. It's probably more stronger, but I guarantee it sounds the exact same when I have it to my JBL Charge 3. If you don't believe me, let's go ahead and turn on my JBL and let's go ahead and play Flutter by Diamond Eyes. NCS, so long, copyrighted sound. Okay, 
So you can see how loud it gets when I put it in the box. The reason why is because it vibrates the air inside of the box itself and it causes the passive radiators to also move. But I guarantee you that this speaker sounds the exact same way. It's obviously not gonna fit because the hole is just way too small. This speaker is massive compared to this little guy. So let's go ahead and play it again. Okay, so you can see that worked perfectly fine. So I guarantee and it was correct. They both sound the exact same thing, but this one, since it's designed for the JBL Charge 3, it fits in the enclosure perfectly fine because it is designed for it. And it moves the airwaves inside, making it louder. That's what makes the JBL louder. When you have it free air, which is, that's what we call it in the speaker world, uh, this is free air. So it's basically vibrating nothing. It's just the sound coming out of the cone and that's it. But when you have it in an enclosure, it moves the airwaves inside and outside of its enclosure, causing it to be significantly more louder. That's how it just works. But this guy, on the other hand, this is a whole different story. You can see you got massive uh, base radiators or pass radiators as we call them. And you can see this is just a mid-range and mid-range only outputs. And this is a high range and a high range only output. So this has a crossover making the sound uh, into tweeter and into mid-range. That's how it works. So, why this JBL has a tweeter versus this one. Doesn't have a tweeter, look at the difference. You have to at least have a super small tweeter to put it in there and it's just gonna cost more money on JBL's point uh, just for them to make a uh, crossover and a bigger box for it. It just doesn't make sense when you can just have a full range speaker. So, if I turn this guy on, and, uh, let me see, it is turning on, and how it just, uh, the reason why it just needs a tweeter is because these don't sound good on their own. So, uh, I wow. currently have a plane, you see, it doesn't sound as good, um, because, you know, it's just a mid-range. Okay, let's go ahead and put the tweeter. So, this is how it works. So, you obviously got your tweeter, you got uh, your just mid range, and you know, these are the two. And these belong to the JBL Extreme 2. The reason why JBL uh, Extreme 2 is way bigger is because it has to at least have room for this tweeter. That's just simply how it works. But you have to make this guy way bigger just to put a tweeter in and it costs more money just to do. So the option what JBL decided to do, which is a full range speaker, yes, they decided to use a full wind speakers. It does not handle the lows. It does not handle the wise or the highs too well, but yet it still works. If it works, it works, then use it. Um, so it's just more simpler, if that's even a word. Um, but it's just more simple um, and it's cheaper to make. So basically the moral of this video is why JBL Extreme 2 and the JBL Charge 3 doesn't and does have tweeters. The reason why, like how I said, it needs to make the JBL bigger or taller and they had to put a crossover. And I actually got a crossover lying right here and I'll show you the difference. So this is a crossover. Let's say this is your Bluetooth input and you know, you got everything and you got your amplifier. 
So the amplifier sends a signal to positive and negative to the crossover. And this is fairly cheap to make. Uh, you just need these components right here. You need a coil, you need a capacitor, another capacitor, and that's all you need. So, this is the tweeter output. You can see because of the capacitor right there. Speaking of capacitor, I actually have one right here. So I actually show you the difference on how they work. So this is your input. Let's say your Bluetooth input and it's going to the amplifier. The amplifier sends a signal to here and then uh, it goes here. The high ranges or the mid ranges just pass through here and go on. And that's what causes the excursion. Excursion means the travel of the speaker. That's how it works. But the high range in the other hand, it is only responsible for the high frequencies and that does not allow low bass or any sort of bass at all to these uh, to these leads. The reason why is because tweeters are extremely fragile. They can easily blow up if you put too much power to them. If, uh, if you put way too much power, the voice coil will overheat, it would, um, it would start to burn up in the inside because one, these don't have the same travel as a speaker like this one. This this speaker right here, you can actually see that there's slits all over the place and you can see the cone is right here. This, when it moves up and down, it cools the voice coil. So it's sucking in air and blowing it to the voice coil. And it does that so fast. Um, because of the refresh weight. Let's say you have 60 hertz, which is, that's the US refresh, the refresh hertz. Uh, if you have 60 hertz, it is refreshing 60, uh, 60 times in one second. That is fast. And speakers, like how I said, um, how speakers work on my other video, Speakers work on alternating current. Alternating current, aka AC, alternates the positive and negative. So if I get a, a nine volt battery, which is I currently don't have, uh, if you get a nine volt battery and you just plug it in right here, the speaker will go in one or two ways. Either it will go up or it will go down. Because let's say the speaker is south and this voice coil is uh, facing nowhere. So let's go ahead and zoom you guys in. So. Let's say uh, I put in positive to positive, it's gonna go down because it is matching the same thing right here. So this is south and this is facing north and they wanna come in to each other. But if you have it uh, negative or positive to negative, uh, it will go the other way because south and south don't want to be next to each other. They wanna repel each other. Same thing goes for north and north and north and south. That's how it works simply. So you can see the crossover right here. This is a capacitor. So it comes in, it goes to this resistor, another capacitor, and then this final capacitor. So it comes into a winding and that winding inside limits on how much power comes out. And that's how you can put it on a tweeter. That's why you see most six by nines. I put one on the screen right here. So here it is on the screen. You can see the six by nine has a capacitor on the leads. So, to show you an example, this is a capacitor, so you can see what I'm doing. So, let me just adjust my tripod, zoom you guys in, and then you can see it right here. Plug it in. There we go. So, it fits in, put this back. And let's go ahead and zoom you guys out. Adjust you guys once again. Go ahead and turn on the JBL. The song, same song, Flooded by Diamond Eyes. So let's go ahead and play it. Jeez, that sounds terrible. Okay, so you can see the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and unplug this, unplug the tweeter, 
So that's how a capacitor works. So it brings in the positive current and it just limits on how much it outputs. So that's how it works. So a capacitor just captures the energy and that's, and that's why. And it is pretty cheap to get a capacitor. You can just get a, um, a uh, Twitter capacitor. And that's what they are called. So if you do a quick Google search, it will show up uh, on your feed. So moral of the video, JBL needs to make the JBL Church Street way bigger just to put in a little tweeter, which will cost more money. No, but it's just gonna cost more money. So it's just cheaper if you use a full range speaker. So, thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. And yes, if you need to comment on anything, let me know and I will respond um, I will hopefully respond to you guys. I don't get to all comments real fast. So, thank you so much guys for watching. And I will see you guys later.